uh, Akasha here. Thank you for joining me. And um, my website, nanakasha.com, comes from my uh, my birth name was Nancy. Kind of freaks people out, but I'm here with my kids. Uh, they like to call me Nancy. And um, however, you know, talking about the Akasha, I were here with the Akashic Records and some of my dear, dear friends. And uh, Lisa, I know, was here earlier. She's a dear friend of mine, too. So it's so exciting that this is a topic that people are waking up to and understanding. Uh, I have a very different perspective of it. A couple of reasons why I'm kind of older and um, in that wiser woman phase. And I'm very much aware of the seeking, the, the achieving, the applying the, the mindset that we have been all conditioned with to go make it happen and to have to struggle and to take a lot of time to create and to manifest. And I did this for years myself. I got onto my spiritual path. Everything fell apart. I went, what the hell? What's weird? What's different? Back in the dark ages when there was no internet. And when you start to awaken, when you start to be drawn to different information, it's it's fascinating, but what we have to realize, and I think a few people have mentioned it, is that we're evolving so fast now that yes, there's so much that the ancients or other people understood or encrypted or encoded within us. I have that in common with Neil. Uh, I feel like a mystery uh, detective of the, the Mayan of all the different histories. So what is really important is to understand you are the Akasha. Now, my spiritual name is Akasha, and many, many, many years I would have, I traveled with uh, my mystery schools at, at mystery schools I attended and my own, and people would tell me, you have a spiritual name, and I go, I know, but there was a part of me that wouldn't receive it, and um, there was a part of me that still was hooked into the programming I had that said that's very vain, that's very strange, and so on. So when it finally came through, was when I separated from my husband and I went to uh, the first event with my beloved soulmate of our mystery school spiritual um, work. And we were expanding into new dimensions, into new astral planes, into new interdimensional spaces. And it just fell in, boom, Akasha. It felt right. I said, okay, I wouldn't tell anybody what it was. Then I started to use it. Then it became my name. And now it's normal. Sometimes it's you can say Akasha, you can say Nan Akasha. But what just happened recently, I think is really interesting. So a lot of people have a different idea about the Akasha. It's essentially the fifth element. It's what they call dark matter in science. It's what they're trying to figure out is the substance or the element that is everything. And it is available to be imprinted. And it can take in anything you think, anything you feel, and essentially hold it. So it's called a record or library. And I know you guys have talked a lot about that. What's interesting to me is that it is in you. You don't have to go there. You don't have to climb stairs. You don't have to become worthy. And any process that any of these beautiful people or anyone else that you've worked with that gave you that works for you, it, but remember that you are not going somewhere else. You're moving to a new place within yourself, within your light body. So you have physical, mental uh, emotional, the auric field, the spiritual field, you have all kinds of layers and different elements to your light body that are moving and working. And when you realize I am the universe <laughs> is within me, you begin to wake up to realizing instead of the striving for something outside of you, that's when you get to be more present. And that's one of the keys to everything that's happening right now, discovering your purpose, completing your contracts, completing relationships, completing family, things we were talking about. Family is such a big thing. And yet we're all here. Yes, we chose our family. They're perfectly designed, regardless of whether you agree with or like what they did. It's the accepting of what is that frees you to a new level. So as a, um, I had a, a uh, upbringing in the Midwest that said, work hard, suffer a lot, and then maybe you're worthy of, a, a, you know, of an appreciation. <laughs> and yes, exactly, Vina. And so when you start to realize that um, all this stuff that we've been told, this, this lives we've been living, these things we're trying to strive for, there's nothing wrong with that. But it is 
this world of 3D or illusion that is phenomenal because when you get a body, you can touch your beloved, you can taste cacao, you can have these epic experiences, you can go into a cave like I do in my retreats and and tone and, and have cacao ceremonies and reclaim your inner self. And you, this is why we're in a body, but we aren't the body. And so the body is maintained is just the center of the Tootsie Pop, right? There's layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of you. And they're all becoming more attuned or more able to uh, have a higher connection to more of who you were. One of the most important things that's happening is switching from the idea of past lives, other lives. Your soul is a piece of the infinite. And within it, you have helped to create all these different lives, all these different experiences. They all exist already. They hold wounds, they hold contracts, they hold fears, yes. And we've been working with that for a long time. So even if you're new to that idea, you've been working with that a long time because the planet's been working with that. Now we're down to the bottom of the bar barrel. We're seeing the goopiest, deepest shit come up, right? And now that's coming up within us. It's coming up within the, the society, the schools, the governments, the planet, everything. Blech. And the beauty is within that darkness, within the wound is the doorway that's perfectly designed to lead you to what is that next level. And it's all within you. So when this, it was in December, I was talking to another lady, Amy, that came on my retreat to Greece and she, we were talking about it and all of a sudden, boom, the download just came right. I don't even call it a download because what they told me was she said something about the Akashic records. And I said, you know, she's been in all, uh, almost, I think all of my intuition awakening courses. And uh, because of the bottom line, you need to work on your senses, clear and cleanse your light body, because then going to the Akashic records or becoming the Akashic records or realizing your Akashic records, whatever way works for you, will become, you'll become clearer. You'll become more attuned. You'll be less hooked to thinking, striving, achieving, reaching, and then you'll be receiving. We have to come into our sacred feminine. This year is the key point in our decade of metamorphosis that we're in. And every year we're not going back to who we were. So, <laughs> sorry, it's better, it's good, but there's the breakdown. So the breakdown of the butterfly into goo, nothing's added, nothing's taken out, but the inner knowing is there. And this is what the Akasha is for. And I said to her, I go, you know, you asked me and we created the certification for the Akashic Records. And it was really about really amplifying your ability to clearly receive and then allow it to unfold without forcing a meaning at the communication. You're not going to go and receive, oh, this morning I want to know the answer to these five things. There they are, one, two, three, four, and go out. You might, you might not. You might get it in your dream like Chris does. You don't know, but the unfolding of the information that you tap into is within you. And when you release the need, the agenda, I need to know all my past lives. I need to know why this happened. I need to know if this person did this to me. Here's what happens. When I went through my doctorate to become a homeopathic doctor and nobody was asking for past lives. I didn't go in with the intention of past lives, but they would pop up all the time. And people would come out and look at me and go, um, I don't believe in that. And I'm like, okay, but how do you feel? I'm completely the knowing, the seeing. Now, Neil mentioned earlier, someone telling you, I could do readings for you. I can see your field. I This is part of my makeup. And, not, and then the training I've had, amplified that. And then the acceptance, which I'm going to show you in a minute how to do, amplified that. Uh, accepting of who I am, what I'm designed to be. I'm designed to be weird. I'm not designed to be anybody else. I'm designed to have these unique powers, this perspective. My family gave me certain lessons. I gave them certain lessons. We've gone like this. And this is what is happening. We are all here because we are one of the pinnacle lives within our soul. And within our soul, being a pinnacle life means that you have whatever you need. And when you stop worrying about being good enough, and if a teacher or a course or a process or one of these beautiful speakers says, you know, come to my workshop, or you want to come to my prosperity magic class starting in a couple of weeks, or you want to come to the sacred soul powers class in February, which is where we're going to go. And I'm going to give you an exact process and walk you through accessing your past lives, not just for the wounds, for the powers. And that's the tipping point we're at. You can't access a wounded part of you, another part of life, which is you, and 
if you're only relating to it from, we both have this wound, we both have a fear of speaking up, we both have a fear of being good enough, we both have a fear of not being liked, whatever it is that you've been processing and been gifted and you, you designed your life beautifully with your family. So my family story goes through this really weird thing, but then when you reach a point and realize you designed with the divine, all knowing parts of you and guides and whatever else, you designed this life, you brought with you, it's encoded for you, but you can't hear it when you're trying to achieve what everybody told you to achieve. So I was always trying to be good enough. I never thought I would be. I was a massive people pleaser, an overachiever. And there's certain benefits to that. Then everything fell apart. My million dollar business went into bankruptcy or it didn't really go into bankruptcy. You just had to close it because it was the end of the eighties and everybody, even the department stores I was selling to went uh, bankrupt and didn't pay. I didn't know people didn't pay their bills. So I had a crisis of identity, a crisis that I had done what I was told I was going to be a success in my family's eyes and it all fell apart. And now I call that one of the best things that ever happened to me because it got me on my spiritual path. It was like, this is far enough on this path with this mindset, doing life in this way for you to achieve the completion of those Akashic records of those lives of that pattern, because your soul, you know, at that other level that you need to complete being held back by marrying the same type of relationship over and over, right? Or the different patterns that we all really see that seem to hold us back. So when you go, oh, okay, the next step is already encoded within me. I can trust that my intuitive network, all the aspects of you are always guiding it unless we get in the way and try to control it with our thoughts and our ego and our conditioning. Now that's normal. So I said, I realized at one point I was making strides. I was studying with shamans. I was going to Egypt and spending four hours, two days in a row with uh, hundreds of my, uh, only our group, right? Locked in the King's chamber and ascending and going into other worlds and literally the, the King's chamber turning into other things. And this experience was mind blowing and soul changing. And I loved all of it. And I met soul, some of the guides that were with us were literal karmic Akashic record soul mate type people. These two guys that were guides for two of the buses. And um, we were crying. We were hugging and crying. When I got to Egypt, they were, the guy picked up my luggage said, welcome home. And they often do this there because they know so much of, so many of us come there and I started to cry, you know? And so when you have these things, you know, these are guides. These are part of you that hold power. Often clients uh, or people will be afraid of Egypt. I don't like Egypt. I don't want to go to Egypt. And I had a client like that. She wouldn't touch my Egyptian stuff at a retreat. And she realized the whole re the retreat was about going down the Nile up through the chakras, through the Nile. And she goes, oh my God, how come I didn't know this was about Egypt? And everybody in the room looked at her and said, that, that was the entire point. And she was like, oh my God, my higher self made me completely blind to that because I had to be here. And slowly she couldn't even go near this uh, sculpture of the Sphinx. And then she would, okay, touch it a little more. Because when she went through one of these processes, you can see and experience, and she realized she was a priest in Egypt, and she felt very honored to, to be trained in the priesthood, and she worked and did everything that the higher priests told, and she thought that her life was of purpose, and then what happened is um, she realized before she died that, that there was some corruption, and there was some misuse of power. And she felt so guilty about it and she died that way. And now she came into this life to heal that. And of course there were other lives in her soul that took that wound of, I was duped, I can't trust. Um, I can't become a person of power. I can't lead the people. I failed the people. And this is what causes the, the lack of desire to speak your truth or to connect to your soul powers. So this year, in my mystery school is all about the sacred feminine arts and that's men and women because we are out of balance, both the masculine and feminine, and we're empowering the feminine to rise again. We've reactivated when we went to eat, uh, to Greece, we reactivated the Kundalini, the uh, Delphine, the Kundalini. This is one of my new Oracle cards that we're uh, working on right now. And that's the Kundalini of earth that was 
was taken uh, and, and disconnected. And now we are all reconnecting to direct access. We don't know what that's like. So what I want you to realize overall is that everything you have is already designed and you carry it with you. You can take in information from teachers and people, of course, uh, go on retreats, please. These are the best transformational experiences ever. The, the being in the place multidimensionally through time and space, because there's no limit in our truth that you go to a, a temple and it's a stargate. Maybe you go somewhere with the electrical umbilical cords uh, that go from there to all the places. Maybe you had a life there as a priestess and you re see that, or you become again, uh, pregnant, you become fertilized with the truth and the wisdom and the power that you had when you were a priest or a priestess, or when you were an artist or you were a farmer, it doesn't matter. So these lives all hold power and it's time now for us to get past that we're wounded and start to say, oh yeah, I came here to do that. This still hurts in my body. That still hurts in this relationship, but they're dwindling. Take out the trash, realize the Akasha is you. And that's what Amy said I, uh, that I was talking to in the beginning. She said, my client who came to Greece with us, she said it was so profound going to these different sites at one after the other and how we accumulated that sort of activation right of uh, the very first place we went was in delphi and that's the navel of the planet we reconnected to gaia we did it from apollo's temple which is the place that takes the feminine the masculine uh over the feminine and yet we can't take any of these things that happen so if you're going around the world saying the that that you're tuning into the anger or the pain of a place, then that's within you. And you're there to both release it. Because Gaia isn't angry and truth and rebirth and what you're seeking in your Akasha is answers or healing or freedom or guidance. Like, what is it that you want from it? Because it's not separate from you. So the minute that you start to realize that now your Akashic records guide or however you want to put it, I just call it the Akasha, is a guide that could appear to you as an animal. It could appear to you as a fairy. It could appear to you as your higher self or a goddess or a, a, a glowing orb or nothing at all, but a knowing, all right? So if you have a tendency to feel like, oh, I'm not doing it right, or I tried that process, but it didn't work, then do this. And this is what Amy said. She said, you hold a space where I can tap in and see things and trust myself at a new level. And I start saying, you know, it's interesting. I've never thought about going to the Akasha. It was just always there. And I haven't been able to just define I'm a channel for, or I'm a seer, or I'm an oracle of, because I don't just channel Isis or Gaia or fairies. It's almost anything that's optimal for the highest good of all concerned at that time. And then immediately in that moment, my higher self, my Akasha, my, my essence, my soul said, that's why your name is Akasha. You are the Akasha. So it gave me an understanding of the depth of what happens in most processes you do, just seeing or understanding that you had a life where you were burned at the stake for using your powers of healing. And now you're afraid to come out as a healer. Okay, this is very common. We see this nonstop in my classes. I'm sure everybody here does. This is what you're here to see. You don't become afraid of it. You let it come up. All right. So I used to be afraid of feeling the pain of my daughter dying again. And I went into an ayahuasca ceremony and I was floating in pure bliss, the sea of bliss of reality. And then it came and it was like tiny raindrops and little knives that were stabbing. Okay, and I've been traveling all through the worlds and all through the Akasha and all through and Thoth was taking me and we were looking under the pyramids and we were visiting my parents and, and we were going to when I was an inner child, and we came back around and I was tears were just pouring down me and by my back and I was arched into this almost painful orgasmic state ecstatic state. And then that came. But it was literally like, I am the field of bliss, the sea of bliss, and this little knife stabbed. And it was like, oh, that hurt. Oh, oh. And it just, do, 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 do. and immediately I felt it. I received it. 
and it became a part of me and then it was diluted and dissipated into the bliss. So that idea of following your bliss, because doors will open where only you saw walls, where guides and doors are waiting for you that are only there for you. If you, if you come on my retreat to Greece in May and let's say you're one of X number of people, everything we do will be different than if you weren't there because you have key codes within you. You have energies in your Akasha that you don't need to know about. So part of the uh, what they were telling me, uh, I'm in the moment all the time. I don't have a preparation of a talk. And as I was sitting here listening to the the, the Melissa and the, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say the beautiful lady's name, Shrimpumi, I think. Um, then my uh, Akasha, my guides, my essence begin to speak to me. And so I'd say, oh, there's this, there's this, there's this, show them that, whatever. And then we come into the moment and I see what you, because you are here right now. And whoever's going to see this in the future is here right now. So we're time travelers and um, you can be a time traveler to any part of you, to any uh, past life, future, potential uh, timeline life, any other star that you've been on. It's all part of everything. The other thing I want to tell you that's really fun, I don't think a lot of people acknowledge because people are going to the Akashic Records or wanting an Akashic Records reading. And when you do a session with me, I'm when you're first coming and sharing what you want, I'm watching, I'm seeing the things in your field. I tell you what they what what's coming up. We do a little light body healing or whatever, but then we go in together and you're having an experience and you're seeing and feeling it. And that's where the deeper profound healing happens. And when you go in with me, I am the Akasha. So I'm holding the space. So I understood a new level of why I can hold space. I, um, on the retreats, I can hold space for all the different people in a different way and hold space for everyone. When I went to the King's Chamber the second time, we had a much smaller group and there was some kind of mix up. It wasn't my retreat. I was asked to be the spiritual guide of the excuse of the retreat and they didn't get private access so we got there right away we ran up the stairs we got in there and i immediately began to create space and i toned and did other energy work until we were between the worlds and the 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 chamber opened to us and by the time people were coming in nobody could see us and they were walking around and then one by one my group started to leave the circle and go get into the sarcophagus have their experience and then come out. And then they were visible again. And then when they were all done, the lady who was leading the group came to me and said, okay, you can stop now. And I stopped and it, I was making noise. Okay. I was toning and I was using it. And I'm, I'm like, a, a, I do sound healing and I work with all the elementals. I work with Gaia. I work with anything in the Akasha. So everything you do, when you do a meditation, you've now put it into the Akasha. When we did that, we put it in the Akasha. Somebody might go there needing to go back to that moment, to go into that space that I created, and it exists there. You tune in to the time and place. I'm back in Minnesota where I would come often as a child because my family's from here and where I went to college and then where I got married and then where I came back with my little kids. And then when I came back after my mother disowned me and now uh, my parents are 90, my children are grown, um, my some of my in-laws are dying. It's a very interesting thing to come back somewhere you've been before. If you Do you ever stand somewhere and see, sense and feel yourself in all those other times? There's you as a two-year-old or a 10-year-old when I went to Greece, I had that experience. So you are the Akasha. And then when you start to move more in the present moment, you realize everything you do is that you're in communication. So it's sort of serving you, your intuitive network, I call it your higher self, your I am presence and your body elemental, including Gaia, because your body's made of Gaia makes up this network uh, that's a crystalline network that you activate if you work with me, but you have this, okay? And the clearer it becomes, the more you start receiving visions, guidance, trusting, knowing, and essentially you're dipping into the Akasha on a regular basis, the more present you are to yourself in every moment, okay? And then I um, feel like I got lost there a little bit. So letting it unfold. There's a couple of things I'm going to share. Oh, let me see. People are saying hi. I always wanted to go everywhere. It's a normal flow, Moni said, but I had a bad journey with the Sphinx. Funny you tell this. I woke up in a dream being eaten by bugs. The Egyptian lives do hold something for me. 
I've not visited too many. I have preferred Sirius. Well, and Sirius is, is the shaft that's aligned to the queen's chamber. So I'm a sacred geometry specialist and um, a mystery school specialist. And I teach a lot of this in my different mystery schools. But the, the, the sacred feminine, uh, Sirius and the Syrians are our spiritual sun. So that's a very beautiful alignment. So many people are either repulsed or attracted to Egypt. And there can be uh, beautiful awakenings there, powerful awakenings there. I had, uh, we blew the power out on the Giza Plateau and uh, we were locked into the, <laughs> after four hours, we were sweating. We had no uh, light and we had to get out. Uh, there were a lot of us and uh, it triggered claustrophobia at epic levels that I had at every temple we went to for, for a few days until we went to Philae, which was the Isis temple where I had the healing of it. So when you do go to these places, uh, they're very intense because you're going in and out of other lives very quickly. You may have, remember your lives in your Akasha have, whether it's, it's ones you remember or not, doesn't matter. You have access to them. And so there might be one life that is a farmer and decides to use his voice to go out and rally everybody to fight the evil king. And you all do. And everybody's killed because they're just fighting with rakes and they're normal people. And you're dying on the battlefield and you look across and you see everyone dying. I've had so many clients have that or a similar type of thing where they really, they knew they were doing good. And yet they died thinking I killed everyone I love and I'm never going to use my power and my voice again. That life can become embedded. It's like a little chip, okay, in your field, in your light body, in your kasha. And now it's beaming that signal out and many other lives will have a similar pattern and they can, they can communicate and they can amplify it. And you're the lucky one that agreed to come here to complete many of these. You've completed so many patterns already in your kasha that you don't even know how long, you know, you've been doing this, right? You don't even have to know about them. So that's part of what I want to encourage you to do is, is, is look at your underlying intention to this. Are you coming desperate? Are you craving? Are you wanting an answer? Are you frustrated? Do you want, are you trying to force the answer to mean something as soon as you get something? And this is any meditation, any process, any ceremony, any plant medicine, anything you do. Okay. Please give it time to come in, allow it and receive it. The most important start to the uh, year of the sacred feminine is uh, mysteries is that you receive you have to receive first we have to breathe in uh, before we can release the toxins or before we can release the love or release the voice or release the gift or release the blessings and we all want to be a blessing to the world i have to get some water <laughs> Let me quickly show you. Oh, we were talking about Egypt life. Yes. And um, <laughs> you are all in a place where you may feel like I don't relate to the Mayans. I don't relate to the ancient Greeks. I don't relate to whatever. I don't relate to the idea of unicorns or dragons or whatever. And that's fine. You don't have to. All of these energies are speaking to you if you have a natural affinity. And that's what's fun about realizing you're the Akasha. And if you start having a conversation with yourself and you just say, you know what, what I would really like or what would be fun or interesting, if it's for my highest good and optimal at this time, if it's for my highest good and optimal at this time, please write that down. Only, only, only don't say, is this good for me or should I do this? Those don't mean anything to the higher realms. Should and is it good or would it be the best or uh, whatever it is? Would it make them happy? None of those things are your optimal. You want to know what's optimal. So if you're doing pendulum, if you're doing intuitive work, whatever you're doing, asking for guidance, please ask for what is optimal for you at the, for and your highest good at this time, at this time, at this time, at this time. Okay. That's clarifying. That's bringing clarity and filtering down to what you're receiving. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to learn everything. You've probably learned more than you even realize and don't remember. And when you relax into the present moment, become more present to, okay, this is within me. I am this. If I say, oh, I would love if that rose to the surface as is optimal, then you suddenly might start seeing things, right? Or being answered by things. 
that are very quick in the synchronicities, the symbols, the signs, the magic of your life. So you're here to awaken the magic in every step and every breath. The magic is who you are. You're a unique blend of energies that is magic. And I use the word magic to say um, alchemy. Oh, it's 222. Uh, alchemy is transformation, transmutation, transfiguration. All right. Oh, I want to share this now. And share or ask me any other questions, okay, that you have so that we can uh, open them up. Because I'm a, a clear and open channel, whatever you want to call it, I am the Akasha, it, it's it's easy and simple for me to, to take whatever you're saying. So in the classes, like we're going to be doing prosperity magic next, and we have our prosperity um, grandmothers <laughs> here. And this is the Oracle card. And they've asked to come and to show us how to work in the fields with the full color spectrum, with the energies, with the wisdom of the grandmothers and the ancients and the time, the ability to see that time isn't. And that the key to prosperity is peace. So the two things we're looking for right now on the planet, you notice that everybody's looking for peace. And so this is the scale of consciousness. It comes from David Hawkins. It comes from the book, Power Versus Force. So uh, please, uh, we, we give credit all the time. This is free in the shop, shop.nanakasha.com. So uh, we have a, this and we have the chart of the rays and a bunch of other goodies that are free there. Also at nanakasha.com. We have some, uh, I think a dolphin meditation uh, and some other ones for you as well. So what is so amazing about this is the numbers don't really mean anything. They're just to give you an idea. These are the states of consciousness that are possible when you're in a human body and you aren't the human body. However, the reason when you get older, you really want your health. Right now, I've been eating green juice and so on for three and a half years, starting to help heal my uh, beloved of a very severe seizure where he became a newborn. And it's called grow a new body. And uh, it's, it's working on levels that's not just shedding weight or uh, helping you feel, have more energy. It's going in to clear the toxins and then reactivate the parts of your body that you can talk to from your soul. So when you understand that you're at one of these states, shame is the lowest state you can be in a body and still be walking around. Most people were given a lot of shame as children or in your culture, and it's really used a lot still. And what's happening is the shame frequency, the state of shame means your emotional body is feeling humiliated. That means you're cringing, you're pulling back. Your mind is always miserable. That means it's only vibrating with misery stories. So you see it in the world. This is how you manifest your world is where are you vibrating? So you have to become the receiver and whether you like to the term, the sacred feminine or your intuitive uh, mask, uh, feminine or yin or, you know, white and black, however you want to see these pools, we have to balance them for a Kundalini to rise and we're moving into the dragon year. And there's a lot more information around that. That's very important because that is your Kundalini. And when we release Kundalini and we are out of balance, it explodes, it causes diseases, it causes war. It's all about growth this year. So the wood dragon is about growth. If you are carrying guilt uh, in your body, I mean, sorry, let me go through the process. The process then means, and I've changed this and added to it. So I don't remember what the original scale says. However, the process is what starts to happen around you. What's in your aura, what's in your awareness. So as you are in the state of shame, your mind starts to feel miserable, it's grabby and all that stuff. And the process is elimination. What does that mean? It means all you see is loss. All you can think about is loss. All you can see is how other people are eliminating other people or the things you loved aren't there anymore. You get the idea. You look at the energy. You've got to go deeper into the energy. Feel outside of the restrictive words. Words are limiters in our communication. We are raising our sacred feminine in order to have a higher level of communication across the board. And then you begin to have the perspective of despising. That's showing you how the scale works. Now, right now it's wonderful out there. I really live in a bubble, not only spiritually, I do not consume any 
uh, negative shit. I do not uh, hang out with people who complain. I mean, my clients are welcome to show up with anything. I love it all, but they're there for transformation. So I don't get involved in the stories and the this and that that's going on out there. I am a clear and open channel for the highest good that's optimal for me at this time to be my pillar of light in the world. And the ascension process is at some point you get to the point where you realize you have to hold that space because you don't go alone. We are one. So when you blame, which is the emotional state of guilt, it's the second lowest state you can vibrate in. All the states from pride down are heavy states. Are those are four states, he calls them. It requires energy to see, sense, change, or do anything at any of these lower states, okay? So if you are blaming yourself, if you're blaming your past, if you're blaming your parents, if you're blaming the weather, if you're blaming the government, if you're blaming your boss, if you're blaming your past, if you're blaming your teacher, if you're blaming that country or I don't, whatever it is, I don't care. You can't play that game and then say, let's rise to happiness and go in the Akasha. What will happen if you do a process, enter your Akasha and you're going, I want to know it. You can go in for the answers to those things. But the process is I'm ready to release that rise to acceptance, which is way up here above the water. I've designed this to look like you're coming up out of the water and you're getting your breath. So I want you to say and to realize where are you in certain areas. If you are feeling condemned, you probably have some past life shit coming up, right? If you're feeling hopeless or tragic, if you're feeling like a victim or anxiety, if there's regret, whether it's grief or not, all of these states are going to be something that if you're grasping for answers from the Akashic Records, you're going to force an answer. And the most important thing you can do is go into whatever your session is, whether you're receiving from someone else, you're doing a process, you learn from somebody, you come to my classes, whatever you do, you sit in meditation, you go talk to a tree, you do it your way and please just receive. And then when you see your mind or your ego or your craving or your desperation, those are just illusionary states that you are asking to become aware of. Because when you wanna say, oh, I'm not act acting out and just adding to the Akasha, I'm actually interacting with it. Oh, that's what I used to be. Where's a life that has the power that's lived through the loss of a child? So I took me eight years to get pregnant. I was the happiest pregnant woman in the world. I was swimming with dolphins when I found out I was pregnant. Uh, wild dolphins, there's a whole beautiful thing with it. And then my daughter died. So where is that? Well, that's huge and it's a major life thing. And if you have anything like this happen, uh, and then it was disowned by my parents and then I was uh, given up for adoption and then uh, my daughter died. So then I adopted my twins and then, you know, this happened and that happened. So the, the, the epicness of your story is you. And when you accept it, rather than wishing you were someone else, you can start walking, you can start living it. You can start being more intentional about I don't know what this is happening, but I'm going to accept it. When you rise to acceptance, your emotional body lets go. You don't have to work on forgiveness. Please don't waste time working on forgiveness. It's a waste of time because you're trying to figure out who's to blame and you're going back to the attachments. Your mind goes into harmony and you start to transcend. That's what happens around you. Now, transcendence doesn't mean that you start going with the angels, but maybe you will that moment and then they'll come back into your living room. I don't know. I'm in and out of worlds all day. I'm so fluid. However, transcendence means you don't have to work at it. You don't have to strive for it. You don't have to achieve it. You don't have to climb the mountain to make it happen. Okay. So watch, use this scale to watch where you are with your intentions. And when you come out of a session or a meditation, or if you're in a painful moment, or if you're in a, you can feel that you're going through a karmic release. So I can tell you that I'm here because I'm so happy to be here, uh, that my parents are still alive at 90, that I get to be here, that my beloved got to come. It's the first trip to, to, that he's been able to go on since uh, his seizure, that um, my kids were in harmony. They were here. They spent the night. Like we're, we're in flow. This is the bliss moment. And I'm highly aware of it. I'm also highly aware that on my path, 
through the Akasha, both creating the new reality through my time-space continuum and through recognizing the trail I'm leaving, the effect I'm having with everything I'm doing and connecting to my other lives and becoming one, becoming a team, knowing that the wounds have powers and the powers are ready to talk and we can co-create together. Then you free those other lives in your Akasha and they can move forward too. So when you actually achieve this uh, decade of metamorphosis we're in, you will have your whole soul back moving forward again. And this is part of what you're doing right now. So the sooner that you let go and you accept, you'll rise up, you transcend without effort and the compassion takes over.